Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Will Cook here from Boston University. Just giving an update on the Neuroflate progress. I know it's been quite some time, probably, uh, what, back in, um, in, during the winter or in the fall. I hope it's not been that long. Now, the reason for being MIA is this whole summer I've been working to finish my PhD thesis. I'm actually defending um, uh, next Friday, August 9th, so I've been racing to finish that. Now, the, the Neuroflight paper that's up on Archive and the videos that I've posted related to that, when we were developing these, uh, these policies to actually uh, provide attitude control, we were training in simulation on an aircraft that well, was actually the Iris quadcopter, so uh, it was not a uh, replica of the one that we're actually flying in the real world, which is um, NF-1. This is the uh, racing drone that I built for this project. Because of that, if you've seen the other videos, there, um, there were discrepancies between the performance we're seeing in simulation and also in the real world. And in literature, this is referred to as the reality gap. So uh, because there are just dynamics we aren't able to consider in the simulation environment and the world is a very complicated place, there's a performance gap between the simulated world in which we're training and developing these actual controllers um, compared to the real world. So one of the things that we can do is we can create a digital replica, otherwise known as a digital twin, of our aircraft that we're going to be flying in the real world. So what does that mean? That means in simulation we create uh, models that accurately reflect this aircraft. So that means um, down to uh, the physical appearance uh, to the dynamics of the motors. So what that uh, entailed was building uh, a dyno and uh, a thrust stand to be able to obtain uh, the angular velocity of the rotors, the thrust and the torque measurements, and applying these two models in which we could uh, run in simulation. Now, it was quite difficult to originally uh, achieve stable flight and train these policies however we thought once we had like a stable baseline uh, for these reward systems to be able to uh, train these policies, then moving forward would be easier. Well, that turned out to not be the case. Uh, using this more accurate, higher fidelity model to train has actually uh, been quite difficult. Part of these reasons, I believe, are due to um, the higher accuracy in the motor models. Now we're taking into consideration the actual motor response and the neural network needs to learn these complex uh, dynamics. So this has uh, resulted in um, uh, a larger neural network and also a new reward functions to support these capabilities. These, all these details will be in my thesis that will be published in a few weeks. Um, uh, for those looking to get involved in this research. So why I'm making this video is I'm pretty stoked because I finally got a uh, stable trained policy uh, to fly in the real world. I'm going to show you those two um, uh, clips in this video. They're really quick though because what I noticed was after a flight the temperature of the motors were extremely hot and I was getting worried that they were going to burn out uh, the reason uh, this is occurring is because we're creating optimal policies to reduce the uh, the the error between whatever our um, angular velocity set point is and whatever the gyroscope is reading that um, the control outputs are switching incredibly fast and they're trying to maintain this uh, this set point um, if you've uh, tuned your PID controller, think of this as like just being too high, your, your D gain is just too high, so it's constantly oscillating. Now, uh, you'll see in the video, there's no visible signs of oscillations. However, looking at the black box logs, it's very apparent that the control outputs are oscillating um, 
a lot, uh, more than I would like. And because of this, I was only flying for about like 45 seconds. In the future, what these results show is uh, we really need to provide feedback from the ESC um, temperature into the actual input of the neural network so that we can make sure that we still are able to um, optimally track the set point but in a way that we're staying in a safe bounded region that's not going to damage the actual motor. Uh, this is going to be quite complicated because now um, in addition to all the uh, motor modeling that we did uh, we're also going to have to create models of um, the ESC and also uh, the relationships between our uh, rotor velocity and the ESC temperature and there, this is going to be complicated but um, I think this is the direction that we need to go. Now the other thing that I do want to uh, mention because I'm assuming those that are watching these videos are interested in this uh, technology in this space is after I finish my um, PhD in the next couple weeks I'm going to be starting a company uh, based on bringing this type of technology to market. Uh, with that um, anybody that is preferably in the uh, Boston area in the Northeast that um, does any sort of research with machine learning, uh, preferably reinforcement learning when it has to do with any sort of con uh, continuous control tasks. Um, anyone that does uh, web development, preferably uh, Python based with the Django, and anyone um, that works in data mining and is interested in uh, partnering or uh, being an investor in this company, or if you know somebody, I would greatly appreciate um, you getting a hold of me uh, on my website. My You can find my email on there. So with that, uh, I'll show uh, you the two videos, that uh, flight videos that I took today. And um, probably in the next few days, just preparing for my presentation next week, I'll be posting like other videos because I'm going to have uh, supplementary uh, uh, videos during like the talk. All right. Uh, until next time. See ya. All right, let's take a look at this video. So, not doing anything special in, uh, in any of these clips. If you look out in the distance, you can see the uh, thunderstorm coming in. Uh, so, visually, we can't see any oscillations here. Uh, everything seems smooth. Tracking all of my command inputs. Uh, no real problems and then here I do do a little roll and oh my god it was so buttery I I, I actually couldn't believe how smooth it felt so uh, that made me really happy uh, to go home and make this video now uh, just to let the uh, motors cool off I put it in my car with the AC blasting before doing this next flight and uh, again, just getting a feel for uh, the performance, making sure that uh, the aircraft is responding to my command inputs, and uh, it's giving really promising uh, results. I'm excited to actually take this and um, see if I can replicate some of the issues that I was reporting on before. and. Um, see if they've been fixed in this new policy. One of the particular ones is when uh, you punch it and go, oh yeah, a little faster than I thought, over through a little bit there. Um, one of the issues before is when you punch it and you drop the throttle, it would um, be unstable. So we'll see if that's an issue next time. <laughs> 